Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to For the People and Kids Weekend Reading Series in honor and celebration of Black History Month. Today, I'm going to read, and I've chosen to read, The Great Migration, an American Story Paintings by Jacob Lawrence. Happens to be one of my favorite painters. So let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Lawrence before we start the book. Uh, Mr. Jacob Lawrence was born on September 7th, 1917 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Um, he moved further north throughout his childhood, arriving in Harlem in 1930. Mr. Lawrence took many art classes at local community centers and eventually became a student at the Savage Studio of Arts and Crafts in Harlem. This is a school that was opened up by Miss Sa Miss Augusta Savage, who was an African American sculptor and a wonderful one at that. So this school offered um, budding African American artists a chance to take uh, different types of art classes, drawing, paintings, and sculptors, sculpting classes. Um, Jacob Lawrence was one of many um, soon-to-be famous artists who uh, attended her school. Mr. Lawrence had to eventually leave school to help support his family during the Great Depression. Now this book tells the story of the Southern African Americans who left, who left the South, the rural South, to um, obtain a better life at the industrial North. So the way it tells the story is by Mr. Jacob Lawrence's uh, 60 panels. So he made 60 panels of these different paintings that tell the story of this migration. Um, the panels now live in two different places. So there's 30 of the odd numbers. As I read the book, you're going to see each painting has a number. So all the odd numbers are now at the Phillips uh, Collection in Washington, D.C. And all the even panels are at uh, the New York City MoMA. Okay? So with that said, let me begin this wonderful story. Okay, The Great Migration, an American Story. Painting by Jacob Lawrence. Let's see if you guys can see the bus way for me to do this. Okay. Around the time I was born, many African Americans from the South left home and traveled to cities in the North in search of a better life. My family was part of this great migration. There was a shortage of workers in northern factories because my, many had left their jobs to fight in the First World War. The factory owners had to find new workers to replace those who were marching off at war. Northern Industries offered Southern Blacks jobs as workers and lent them money to be repaid later for their railroad tickets. The Northern bound trains were packed with recruits. Nature had ravaged the South. Floods ruined farms. The boil weevil destroyed cotton crops. Railroad stations were so crowded with migrants that guards were called to keep order. The flood of migrants northward left crops back home dry and spoiled. For African Americans, the South was barren in many ways. There was no justice for them in the courts and their lives were often in danger. Although slavery had long been abolished, white landowners treated the black tenant farmers harshly and unfairly. And so the migration grew. 
segregation divided the cell. The black newspapers told of better housing and jobs in the north. Families would arrive very early at the railroad stations to make sure they could get on the northbound trains. Early arrival was not easy, but African Americans found on the streets could be arrested for no reason. And the migration kept coming. In the South, there was little opportunity for education and children labored in the fields. These were more reasons for people to move North, leaving some communities deserted. There was so much excitement and discussion about the great migration. Mm -hmm. Agents from the northern factories flocked into the southern counties and towns looking for laborers. Families often gathered to discuss whether to go north or to stay south. The promise of better housing in the north could not be ignored. The railroad stations were crowded with migrants. Letters from relatives in the North and articles in the Black press portrayed a better life outside of the South. The migration, the migrants arrived in Chicago. In Chicago and other cities, they labored in the steel mill and on the railroads. And the migrants kept coming. Southern landowners, stripped of cheap labor, tried to stop the migration by jailing the labor agents and the migrants. Sometimes the agents disguised themselves to avoid arrest, but the migrants were often taken from railroad stations and jailed until the trains departed. Black and white Southern leaders met to discuss ways to improve conditions to stop the flow of workers north. Although life in the north was better, it was not ideal. Many migrants moved to Pittsburgh, which was a great industrial center at the time. Although they were promised better housing in the North, some families were forced to live in overcrowded and unhealthy quarters. The migrants soon learned that segregation was not confined to the South. Many northern workers were angry because they had to compete with the migrants for housing and jobs. So there were riots. Longtime African American residents living in the north did not welcome the newcomers from the south and often treated them with disdain. The migrants had to rely on each other. The storefront church was a welcoming place to the center and the center of their lives in joy and in sorrow. <laughs> Black 
Black professionals such as doctors and lawyers soon follow their patients and clients north. Female workers were among the last to leave. Life in the north brought many challenges, but the migrants' lives had changed for the better. The children were able to go to school and their parents gained the freedom to vote. And the migration, the migrants kept coming. This is a story of African American strength and courage. I share it now as my parents told it to me because their struggles and triumphs ring true today. People all over the world are still on the move, trying to build better lives for themselves and for their families. I want to thank you for um, coming and listening to the story today. I apologize for my... <laughs> only turns of the page um we'll be back next weekend with uh two new readers and two new books i am gonna post um a little clip on this so you can really take a look at these beautiful paintings because um it sure does tell the story thank you jacob lawrence and thank you all for coming we'll see you next weekend take care happy sunday